Hello everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to send automated past due date emails using Power Automate. If you enjoy Power Automate, Power App, SharePoint, Teams, and Power BI videos, feel free to subscribe because I'll be putting out more videos in those areas. And now for my intro. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to send automate emails for past due items. And what I mean by that is I have these items in my SharePoint list. So for my use case, I'm going to do this user rented out items and they have to return it after 28 days. After the 28 days passes, the user is going to receive an email every day saying that the item is now due, please return it. So I'm using a SharePoint list, my device checkout list, and I have the date rented here. And I'm going to do this all in Power Automate. So I'm going to calculate if this is past due in Power Automate and then send out an email. And this information is all hosted in my information technology SharePoint. So I just have a couple data fields here, the equipment that was rented, the date that it was rented, uh, rented by me. So we can see that all the emails going to my inbox and item return. So they're all no right now. That's just another uh, check. So if the item was returned, I don't want to send the email. So let's go ahead and navigate over to Power Automate. And we are going to create a new schedule cloud flow. We'll call this as do equipment. And I want this to run every day. And we'll just do 8 a.m. So for this, I'm going to run 8 a.m. once every day. Go ahead and create this. And I'm actually going to use the old designer for this one because when I write my dynamic formulas, so my custom expressions, I like this dialog box better. Uh, the new designer, uh, when you type in the dialog box, gets a little iffy. So we'll stick with the old designer for this one. Okay, so for the first operation, we wanna go ahead and get my items from the SharePoint list. And if your old designer doesn't look like this, go ahead and navigate over to cog wheel in the top right corner. View all Power Automate settings and I have the experimental features turned on. That'll just change the look a bit. Okay, so for my site address, we're just going to go to my information technology because that is where my list is located. And we will do device checkout. That is the correct share point. And we want to grab all of these items. If you do have a large SharePoint list, you want to go in and click on settings, turn the pagination to a number that is higher than your list count. Because if you don't turn that on and you have a large list, it's only, only going to get around a hundred items, I believe. So we're grabbing all the items from my SharePoint list. All right, so let's go ahead and do a apply to each. So apply to each control. And I want to do it on each of the items from my get items list. So it's going to be the value. Okay, so now we need to calculate the date. So let's first put this date into a compose statement. And that date is going to be the date rented. So I'm going to rename this to date rented. And I'm just going to get the date rented value. If I go ahead and save this, test it really quick. We'll grab all of these items. So we got all of the dates that we need. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get the current date. So we're just going to do another compose statement. We will name this current date and so power automate uses utc time zone for default so we have to convert from that so we're going to do convert from utc and we want to do utc now parentheses comma and then i want to convert this to eastern standard time because that is my current time zone comma and then last we just want to do the format i'll keep it the same format as what my date rented is so that is year month and day 
And for the months, make sure your uh, characters are capitalized or else there'll be minutes. And then we just need to close up this statement right here with a parentheses. So this is what your statement should look like. If you're in a different time zone, you might have to use your time zone. And you can find that on the Microsoft documentation website, what, uh, specific, what specific string you have to insert in there. So let's go ahead and save this. Looks like there is an error. And I believe I just had too many parentheses. So we'll remove that last parenthesis at the end, and now we can see the error went away. So we'll go ahead and save this really quick. And if you really want to, you can move this up to the top because you don't need to do this each time you apply to each, but it doesn't really add too many seconds to calculate that. So we'll leave it in there. Okay, it ran successfully. So this item was rented on 3.9 and the current date is four three so they're both matching the same format and everything so it looks good and now for our last compose we actually want to just do the date difference function if you haven't used this function before i'll show you an example of it and then also show you how to manage if the date is zero because if the date difference is zero if the output is different and this won't work so I'll show you how to correct that after. Okay, so for our compose statement, go ahead and do date difference. So it's asking for the start date timestamp. Every time you do the outputs, you have to make sure it is in single quotes. So this is date rented. It's just the name of my first compose statement. So we're gonna separate this by a comma. And then we're going to do outputs current date. So it's going to get the date difference between the date rented and the current date. So if I go ahead and save this and we will rename this to date difference. Okay, so I'll go ahead and run this really quick just to show you the results and how the date for difference formula actually outputs the data. Date difference. So this is how the date difference outputs the data. It will do the day first. So this one was 25 days ago. So three, nine. And then it also does the time. So there'll be hours, minutes, and seconds. So we actually don't want this data. So we're actually going to format this output just to include this. But on one of them, if a user submits it on the same day this is running, so let's say Michael actually requested a laptop today. So the date rented was today. The current date was also today. So it outputs it like this. The way we're going to format it is by looking for a period. And if that period isn't there, the flow is actually going to fail. I'll show you that really quick. And I'll show you the split statement. So let's go ahead and edit this formula and just add split to the front, comma, single quotes, and then we're going to split it by a period. And if we close this up, and then we just want to grab the value at position zero in our array because the split will actually put it in an array. So we wanna grab the first value. So this is how the formula will look, and I'll put all of this in the description down below. So let's go ahead and run this really quick just to show you the output. And for the one that was rented out today, it's going to look different because there wasn't a period in it. So this one was rented 25 days ago, which is what we want. So for this one, since it was rented today and there's no period in it, it doesn't know what to split it on. So we have to correct this function again. So let's go ahead and convert that to an int so we can do a numerical comparison in our condition later down the line. So we just want to do int on this one because that will convert it to an integer value. So if I save and test it again, it's going to fail because it can't convert that last number to an int. 
because it isn't an integer. There it is. So if we go to a value seven, not able to do that. So we're going to wrap this up with an if statement. So if equals outputs current date, and then we want to do outputs date run it. So it's going to look at these two and compare it and then tells if they're equal true. If not, it's false. So if it is true, we want to return a zero. If it is not true, we actually want to run the formula that we created. So I'm going to wrap that if statement up and this will be the form, the last formula. I'm not doing any more testing. So I'll just go over it one more time. And I'll put this in the description down below. You just have to change the outputs with your at whatever you name these two. So if equals, so if the current date equals the date run it, it's going to put a zero there because there was zero dates passed. And if not, we are going to get the date difference and put that into an integer value so we can compare it later. So I'll go ahead and save this and then we'll finally just test it. Okay, it ran successfully. We'll just go to the last case just to show you. And the date difference is zero. So this is perfect. So we're at the finish line. Let's go ahead and do the condition. So we want to do if the date difference, which is the outputs, is greater than 28. We want to send an email. to whoever run it out the equipment. So it'll be run it by email because that is where I am actually storing the user. And we'll just do a simple subject. So please return the equipment. Return now. And if it isn't, we really don't want to do anything. It's fine. The due date isn't passed yet. So let's go ahead and we will finally test this and we should receive two emails because I believe these two are past 28 days. So we'll check all the conditions. So we have one, we have two. And then we'll just go to my inbox and then we have to return our headset and then return our mouse. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll put all the formulas down in the description below. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the troubleshooting. Uh, I can always give you the final answer, but I want you to think how I achieved this and what issues you can run into. So that'll make you a better Power Automate user when you're troubleshooting down the line when you encounter errors. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and leave me a comment. If you like the video, go ahead and like it and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video.